In this recording, we will work through a basic example on how to apply our IFRS 15 five-step model revenue recognition. Before we look at the example, let's revise our five steps. Step one, we need to identify the contract with a customer. Now, when you look at our diagram or picture on your right-hand side, there has to be a customer and an entity. And our first step, there has to be a contract between these two parties, an agreement in terms of the criteria of IFRS 15 paragraph 9. The second step, we need to identify the performance obligation. Now, what is a performance obligation? This will be a promise by our entity to deliver distinct goods or services or a series of distinct goods or services to our customer. Step three, we need to determine the transaction price. Now this is the consideration that our entity will receive from our customer. There is four important aspects that we will look at during our lecture. Step four, we need to allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation in the contract. Therefore, guys, this will be our transaction price that we will have to allocate to our performance obligation. But how do we do this? This will be based on our standalone selling price. Remember, your standalone selling price will comply with our RFRS. 13 fair value measurement principles. It has to be a price in an observable market with similar terms and conditions under similar circumstances. Step five, we may now recognize the revenue when or as the entity satisfies our performance obligation. Remember that the performance obligation can be satisfied either over time or at a point in time. Telstar Limited. Now I've included all of this on one page again to indicate to you how to apply the five steps to this basic example. A telecom entity, Telstar Limited, entered into a contract with a customer on 1 July 2017. The customer subscribes for a 12 month contract and in return receive a free handset from Telstar. The customer will pay a monthly fee of 200 Rand per the contract and receive the handset immediately after the contract has been signed. Telstar Limited sells the exact same handsets for 700 Rand and an identical contract without a handset for 140 Rand per month. Telstar Limited has a 31 December 2017 year end. Now, when you look at this scenario, our customer will receive one, the free handset, and two, this is a cell phone contract, telephone contract, has the monthly subscription, which will be for 12 month period. They did not indicate to us, does this relate to minutes, data, and so forth. We do not know that. Now, when we look at our five-step model. Our first step, we need to identify if there is a contract. Yes, they've indicated to us that they have entered into a contract. Step two, we need to identify the performance obligation. Now, what is the performance obligation? Remember that this is a promise by the entity to provide distinct goods or services to our customer. Do you agree with me that this will be our handset and our network services, the 12 month plan? Therefore, this will be our performance obligation. And there is two of them. There's a handset and the 12 month subscription plan. Step three, we need to determine our transaction price. Now, what is the consideration that our customer is going to pay the entity? Our customer will pay a monthly fee of 200 Rand. Therefore, our transaction price will be the 200 Rand per month 
times 12 months, and this will be 2,400. Now, this is our transaction price. Our step four, we need to allocate the transaction price to our performance obligation. We now need to allocate this 2,400 to our handset and our 12-month subscription. How are we going to do this, guys? The standard indicates to us that we need to use a standalone selling price. Now, this is important. A standalone selling price is a price determined in accordance with RFRS 13, our fair value standard. And it indicates to us that this is the price that when we sell the exact same contract with the same conditions, circumstances to a third party where we have observable inputs. That is the price that we can use as our standalone selling price. And they have indicated to us that the exact same handset can be sold for 700 Rand and an identical contract for 140 Rand per month. Therefore, our first step within step four will be to determine but what is our standalone selling price? And this will be the 140 times 12 plus the 700. This will be a total standalone selling price of 2,380. Now, how are we going to allocate our standalone selling price to our transaction price? My recommendation is that you include a table. A table where you have your performance obligations, your standalone selling price, your transaction price, and then you will be able to allocate your revenue. Our performance obligation will be one, our network services, two, our handset. We know that our standalone selling price relating to our network services is 1680 and our Handset is 700. Our transaction price has a total value of 2,400. Our total of our standalone selling price, which we have calculated, we need to include. Our, we can now calculate our portion of our transaction price that relates to our network service. And you can use the 1680 divided by the total standalone selling price times our total transaction price and this will be an amount of 1694 that we can allocate to our network servers. Remember, always important, include your referencing for your market to be able to see. Then B will be our handset and we can allocate an amount of 706 to our handset. Now we are able to recognize our revenue. This is our step five. We can recognize the revenue once the performance obligation are satisfied. Now let's just quickly talk about this one. When will the performance obligation relating to our handset be satisfied? They've indicated to us that the customer will receive the handset immediately after the contract has been signed. Therefore, do you agree with me that we may recognize the revenue relating to our handset? And this will be the 706. But what about our monthly network fees? We may only recognize this per month. Why? The performance obligation will only be satisfied at the end of each month. We may only recognize the monthly portion each month. And this will be the transaction price of 1694 divided by 12. And we may recognize an amount of 141 as revenue per month. But it is important that you remember that they pay 200 Rand. What do we do with this difference? Now, how do we account for this 59 Rand difference? And RFRS 15 indicates to us that we may recognize a contract asset relating to this 59 Rand 
Let's look at our journal entries. This will be our journal entries relating to step five, to recognize the revenue. When you look at our table, we have identified that we may recognize the revenue in terms of our handset the 706. Our revenue increase on the credit side, therefore we will credit our revenue in our profit and loss with the 706. Now what do we debit? We will have to debit our contract asset. You will identify each month we will allocate that 59 rand to our contract asset, this 59. And this will clear the contract asset account at the end of our 12 month period. Now, to ensure that you take out your inventory, you will have to remember to debit your cost of sales and to credit your inventory with a handset. And now we need to recognize our monthly revenue. Debit our trade receivables. We will credit our revenue from the network services, the contract, with the 141, and we will credit our contract asset with the 59. And our total trade receivables will be the 200. Now, let's quickly talk about our contract asset. This is the entity's right to consideration in exchange for goods or services that the entity has transferred to a customer when that right is conditioned on something other than the passage of time. Therefore, guys, this will be a future performance. Now, the entity has the right to receive the income relating to this asset. Therefore, a future performance, they will only be able to receive all of the income relating to that asset at the end of the 12-month period. This is a very basic example 